Museums are great places to learn about science. They form part of this kind of informal science learning community. Uh, a big part of science museums these days is the interactive exhibits that kids can, can play with. They can pull levers and press buttons and like turn pulleys and do all kinds of fun hands-on activities. But do students learn anything from these activities? Sometimes, yeah, there's no doubt, there's, there, there's a lot of learning going on. But other times, I think some of the hands-on activities become more like slot machines. So this video is about that. This is an exhibit at my local science museum. Take a look. So we press the red button and eventually a train starts. That's, that's it. That's, that's the whole exhibit. Um, my son likes trains, so he will press the button and eventually, well, the train doesn't start right away. So then he'll press the button again. And then the train goes and he'll watch the train. Um, and then he tries to do it again and maybe he'll do it a second time and then he gets bored with it and then he'll just walk away. This is what I call a slot machine exhibit. There's interaction, but there's not much learning. Um, kids can keep pressing the button, but eventually they just get bored and walk away. And I want to, I want to, before I critique this activity in depth, I want to point out that a lot of times activities in museums are just about having fun, right? You want students, you want families, you want children to, um, have fun at a science museum and, and come back next time, right? That, that's kind of priority number one. Um, so not every activity has to be this in-depth learning experience kind of thing. But my impression of this particular uh, train exhibit is that it's trying to teach something. And I think that something has to do with um, solar panels or maybe electricity. Um, the problem is that it doesn't make that connection explicitly enough um, and so what you end up with is kind of just a, a, a kind of plain interaction. Um, so what's going on in principle, you press the button, which uh, uh, turns on the light, and then the light uh, is absorbed by the solar panels, which store the electricity. And then once there's enough electricity, the train will go around the track. But this is a little confusing. Pressing the red button doesn't do anything immediately. Um, so the kid has to kind of wait to see what's going to happen. And there's nothing about the inside of the exhibit that illustrates um, why the solar panels might be important at all. There's buildings, there's train tracks, there's a little uh, train station. And then there's these black things that, yeah, I mean, who knows? They could be buildings too. Um, so it seems like there's some connection between the button pressing and the train moving, but what exactly that connection is, is unclear. In cases like these, in cases like these, I like to think about a single question. What's the simplest thing that we can do to improve this learning experience? And there are three potential options. Uh, sorry, there's, there's actually many potential options, but I'm going to talk about three of them. So option one, you could always have the lights on and you can have the button um, expose the solar panels to the light. Um, and then the train goes once the solar panels are exposed to the light. This also might be a little opaque for uh, children who are visiting the museum, but at least it focuses attention on what I think is the main thing that they want people to pay attention to, which is the solar panels. So you can have the light, but then the solar panels open and then the train goes, and you might imagine that this could prompt a question or two from a child, like, why is the train moving when, this, when these black things like open up? Option number two would be to have two buttons. One controls the light and the other controls the solar panels. So 
in this in this kind of scenario, um, you've basically created a two by two um, problem space. So only when the light is on and the solar panels are exposed to the light will the train go. So in every other scenario, if you know the light is on but the solar panels are closed, or the solar panels are up but there's no light, or none of them are on, um, in every other scenario, there's uh, the train does not go. Um, and so this also, I think, would prompt potentially interesting conversations between parents and children about you know what's happening, what are these things, you know there's solar panels, they absorb solar energy and turn it into electricity, and et cetera, et cetera. Another option or another thing to think about is to add some sort of visualization to the exhibit to help illustrate this connection between light and electricity. Um, so you could do uh, you could do this a couple of different ways. One is just to put up a static image of you know the sunlight, the solar panel, and you know the you know, train or the electricity or whatever, um, which just might help, might, might, might just as, as a visual aid illustrate kind of what the process is um, that's happening. Um, and you can, you know, if you're going to be fancy and you could light up the lights and then, you know, once the solar panels have stored enough energy, those get thing and then one then that gets lit up. And then once the train uh, starts going, that gets lit up. Um, just something to get get children to pay attention to this connection, this kind of key connection, if that's you know the main learning goal. Um, now I'm, I'm giving the museum a, a bit of a hard time here because in a lot of cases museums um, they might have a, a main parts of the exhibit and then they have like you know I've got six feet of space and we've got to do something with it and I've got these materials and like. The show is going to start in, you know, next week. So we've got to figure out what to do. So in, in a lot of cases, you know, these smaller exhibits are, are, are you know, uh, uh, solutions to a multi-constraint problem. You know, there's, there's time, there's materials. Um, and so, you know, they're not always going to be home runs. Um, but uh, a lot of times there's a little, just a little tweak that we can do to make an exhibit more interesting or more of a learning experience. Okay, so do you have an example of a kind of hands-on activity or interactive experience that you think just just doesn't do it, <laughs> just doesn't do the trick. Um, you know, it's 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 active. This the student gets involved, or you get involved, or the the um, uh, child gets involved, but um, it just doesn't seem to lead to much productive learning. If you do, if you have an example of that, I'd like to hear about it in the comments. I'd also like to hear about examples where um, you made a change to uh, maybe a learning experience um, that kind of changed something from a more slot machine kind of experience to maybe a more... Um, more meaningful learning experience. And if you haven't already, it would really help me out if you subscribed, um, if you like this kind of content, if you like kind of talking about learning and teaching and science and this kind of stuff. Um, that's what I'll do here for the foreseeable future. Um, so please subscribe. It helps other people see the video. It helps me. It makes me feel good. And uh, yeah, the show notes as usual are in the description. So thanks. Take care.